In Neo, you play as William, a pirate recruited by the Queen of England to gather magic stones known as Amrita to defeat the Spanish Armada. Once the war is over, he's betrayed by his former allies and imprisoned. During his escape from the Tower of London, William's guardian spirit, Sertia, is stolen by the alchemist Edward Kelly. William travels to Japan to retrieve Sertia, only to be caught up in the events of a civil war and the demon spawn from Amrita. Neo is a unique take on the action RPG formula of the now well-established FromSoft Souls series. It's hard not to see the comparisons, but Neo does enough different to set it apart. Combat has a lot of depth, but the core mechanics are more than enough to get you through the game. Attacking into a combo, then swapping weapons and getting stamina back from Key Pulse and Flux to continue your combo with your sub-weapon is cool and satisfying, but never necessary. Stances all have benefits and downsides to using them and are all useful in the right circumstances. High stance favors heavy attacks, can be used effectively on slower enemies. Medium stance is more balanced than what I use for the vast majority of the game. Low stance is designed for fast attacks and is more defensive, with superior dodging and the ability to retain your block while dodging. The core of Neo's combat is based around positioning, knowing when and how to dodge various attacks, and knowing when to block or counterattack. Running while locked on is also a very useful thing, as some attacks are simply easier to dodge by sprinting rather than trying to time a dodge. Many of the yokai enemies have weak points which can be exploited. You can cut demons horns and then stun them to use a finishing move which does a lot of damage. Through the course of the game, you'll learn when and where to attack the various enemies to trigger a stagger. Some weapons and stances have easy ways to exploit these weaknesses, and figuring out what works against what enemy is satisfying. It's a strategy that rewards knowledge of the enemy's movesets, which will become very accustomed to since Neo lacks enemy variety. Frequently you're running into the same set of enemies over and over again. I was genuinely sick of giant skeleton with axe by the end of the second region, and they continued putting them everywhere all the way to the end of the game. As you progress through the later stages, you continue to encounter the same sets of enemies you've previously encountered in the first two regions, simply scaled up. The extreme lack of meaningful enemy variety can definitely hamper your enjoyment of the game. There are a decent array of enemy types, but you're frequently subjected to the same core few, which feels like a design oversight. The leveling system feels neglected. It seems like Team Ninja just included it because they felt they needed to because it's a staple of the genre. Benefits to your weapon scaling via stats are trivial while leveling up your core stats past 10. The soft caps kick in so early that it's almost as if they wanted you to level everything equally. Balanced builds appear to be more favorable, as you can effectively use any weapon you get from the randomized loot system as opposed to focusing on one or two types. Gear upgrades are dramatically more important than your stats. That's unfortunate since it really feels like build variety will come down to focusing on ninjutsu or magic since pure stat builds get minimal bonuses over the general purpose or magic focused builds. The way you accumulate Amrita also seems like an afterthought. You'll be struggling to level up in one mission, then in the next mission you'll be given enough Amrita for multiple levels. It feels inconsistent. There is some absolutely amazing level design in Neo. Just like in Dark Souls, you have a checkpoint system in the form of shrines, and the levels have numerous shortcuts to streamline your traversal through to the end boss after unlocking them. Main missions always utilize shortcuts in meaningful and sometimes clever ways. You're often made aware of shortcuts long before you return to them, which gives you a heads up to look for them when you're looping around the level. It does feel like there are too many shortcuts at times, with some feeling totally irrelevant. There were doors and levels I simply did not get a chance to open numerous times. For the most part, the level design in the main missions is quite good and it has a decent variety of objectives. To its credit, a lot of levels feature unique takes on established formulas. Early on you need to go through a silver mine that's polluted with gas, and there are machines which cycle the air, eliminating the poison. Other missions may require you to find hidden entrances in a ninja mansion, or fulfill other criteria like destroying crystals. Despite most of the good level design, Neo suffers from environments looking and feeling the same. The main mission levels are all unique, but sub-missions recycle environments frequently. In the beginning it's not so bad, as you start in a different part of the map than in the main mission with a different objective. Towards the end it starts to feel lazy since you're just doing a slightly different task in the same levels that you just did. The issue is, is that there just isn't a lot of variety. There's only so much you can do in historical Japan and you're frequently visiting the same style of buildings, castles, and cave complex for Neo's entire runtime. There's diversity in the beginning, but some aesthetics like burning towns are recycled multiple times. PvP wasn't available for review and has not been patched in yet as of publishing this review on February 14th, 2017. Graphically, it's quite impressive. Most of the environments are pretty dark, so it's hard to really appreciate them a lot of the time. The rain and snow effects stand out as some of the best I've ever seen. It's unfortunate that they aren't used more often. There are occasions when there is slowdown, most notably are when enemies are wandering in the distance you can see choppy animation. 
You do have several graphical options to adjust. There may be improved performance on the PS4 Pro or with some of the other options, but I played on a standard PS4 with the defaults. Otherwise, graphical issues are minor. All I really encountered was some hilarious death animations and some wonky cutscene physics. I found the soundtrack to be forgettable. There are a few tracks that stood out as being played again and again. It's hard to assert whether or not there are unique tracks for each boss or if they were just the same track or remarkably similar. A large part of Neo is simply ambient noise with no background music, so when the music kicks in, it can feel a bit jarring. Some of the more intense music had a tendency to come in at awkward times where nothing was happening and it felt out of place. Neo is based in the end of the Sengoku period of Japan, which was a civil war. This makes William feel totally out of place and largely irrelevant to the events going on. The voice acting seems competent, but I have no way to accurately judge if it is since it's nearly all in Japanese. The only exceptions are the introduction and some occasionally hilarious lines from Hattori Hanzo in hilarious broken English or the rare occasions where William speaks. Who are you? A foreigner? Your skill against Oni is implicit. As is your skill with English. I don't mind since I always play with subtitles on regardless, but it's something the game forces on you and it's going to be annoying if you absolutely cannot stand reading subtitles. You can actually turn subtitles off and be totally out to lunch to everything going on in Neo unless you're fluent in Japanese, which is an interesting choice. To go along with that, you're often tasked with meeting various characters and it was difficult to remember who people were because of their names. If you're a Japanese history buff, there's probably a lot to get into here, but it was hard to keep up at times. All the equipment names are in Japanese, so it can be challenging to figure out what slot the gear you just picked up goes in. You'll learn pretty quickly that things like Kote go in your hands, but it feels like an oversight not to include a simple hand or head in parentheses after the item's name. This is also true for some items, like bombs, which have their name in Japanese, which makes it harder to assert what they actually are for English speakers. Neo will chew you up and spit you out if you let it. You'll be forced to learn the fundamentals of combat early on, or you just won't make it. The difficulty feels front-loaded, with the first few bosses being what many would consider casual filters. You really need to get these bosses down, as they do appear as many bosses later in the game. The later bosses do kind of lack variety and feel easier than the first set, outside of a handful of unique encounters. I found that most of the bosses after about the halfway point were much easier, probably due to adjusting to the game's systems. Neo is punishing largely because you're liable to be killed in 2 or 3 hits. You have limited healing items, generally 3 unless you find elixir drops or donate items to the shrine to get elixirs. You have 3 heals and you die in a few hits, so you have to get very close to perfect fights to actually come out on top. Hit tracking can be a big problem. Your dodges need to be timed correctly, because larger enemies and boss attacks do have a lot of tracking associated with it. This can lead to a lot of deaths that feel cheap since you dodged but you still got hit because you dodged too early and the tracking caught up to you. Even some attacks that don't have extreme hit tracking often have hitboxes that are borderline. The most notable one in the beginning is Tachibana's charging draw attack which will still hit you even though it looked like you dodged through it correctly. Then some bosses have hitboxes which frequently just pass over you. Some bosses also have instant or near instant attacks which feel like they can 100-0 you which does feel cheap rather than hard. Often what's frustrating in Neo is that the rules that apply to you often don't apply to enemies. The various dual encounters are all uphill battles because they have much better hyper armor and key regeneration than you do. The NPCs will always win out in trades. Bosses will be out of key and dodge and then unleash a huge combo whereas you simply cannot do that. There is satisfaction with beating an opponent that's much stronger than you, but it can often feel cheap and dirty. After numerous attempts, it can sometimes feel like you win by sheer dumb luck rather than besting your opponent. You can turn the tides in your favor with some various utility abilities though. You can gain additional utility tools by investing in ninjutsu or magic. Magic talismans like sloth and weakness talismans are absurdly powerful to the point where they trivialize some of the more difficult boss encounters. Higher level magic and ninjutsu are gated by stat requirements and story progression, but sloth talismans are available at the end of the first region for trivial investment. Sloth talismans are so potent that it's really hard to take them off your magic loadout. Even barring the overpowered nature of sloth talismans, magic in general has some amazing buffs and debuffs that make the game significantly easier. I highly anticipate sloth talismans being nerfed in a future patch. I didn't do any co-op as my PlayStation Plus ran out in December. You do get some NPC helpers on certain missions and together you trivialize even hard encounters of multiple strong yokai. 
Co-op will definitely make the game a lot easier for those struggling should you choose to utilize it. You're gonna die a lot in Neo. Don't get discouraged because the penalties are fairly minimal and there are a few items to get your Amrita back even if you die. Neo is a big game. For the main game, with about three quarters of the optional missions, three Twilight missions, and some mission replays, my clear time was 38 hours, 33 minutes, and 28 seconds. Each main mission usually took me about 40 to 60 minutes on average, depending on how much I struggled with the boss. Sub-missions can vary dramatically in length. The tasks can be simple, like killing a boss in an arena, or they can be navigating the entire maze-like level looking for keys or killing specific enemies. Then just as a nice little bonus, there are Twilight missions, which are more difficult versions of the main missions which yield better rewards. The mission based structure also allows you to go back and replay missions if you enjoyed them, or you want to farm for mission specific weapons and armor. There is a lot of content in Neo, so much that it can feel grueling at points. The main questline drags its feet, and culminates in a predictable, but not very satisfying ending. If after a complete playthrough, you're still hungry for more, you can up the difficulty to Way of the Strong. Way of the Strong acts like New Game Plus, where you can replay older missions with your current setup under harsher conditions for better rewards. It's a nice feature, and the ability to jump back and forth between the difficulties is very welcome. Sometimes you want a challenge, and sometimes you want to go back and absolutely demolish some bosses that gave you trouble in the beginning of the game. Neo isn't going to be for everyone. If you're a casual player, you're going to want to avoid Neo as its difficulty will be more frustrating than enjoyable. Neo's combat has a high skill ceiling and moderate skill floor, which will allow players to get as deep with it as they want to. The only real drawbacks are a severe lack of enemy variety. This may be remedied in future planned DLCs. There's a lot of content in Neo, with multiple optional missions and difficulty settings. Harder missions and difficulties yield better rewards to incentivize players to complete them. PvP will be implemented in the future, further adding to the already large amount of content in Neo. Unfortunately, a lot of this content is recycled and it can get a bit boring. The randomized loot system will be frustrating to some players as you have to farm missions or abuse the blacksmith to get superior equipment. Neo does hand out enough gear that you're bound to find something that's useful to you, so you'll rarely feel too weak. Being able to replay missions for gear or to refight bosses is also a nice change for this genre. Features like New Game Plus being optional and not being forced into a second cycle immediately is also a welcome change. The forced Japanese dialogue requires the use of subtitles which will turn some people off. If you have a PS4 and enjoy challenging action games, and you can look past some humps of questionable difficulty, Neo is definitely something you want to add to your library. Neo gets recommended playing's most prestigious verdict of Recommended. Who are you? I dislike the company of drunk samurai. Hey! I am no samurai. So a common drunk. Even worse. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll be posting a Neo Quick Start Guide in the next couple of days. You can also check out recommendedplaying.com for more text-based content.